In this example, we're going to look at how we can take an existing model and create a recess shape for it to sit inside of. We'll look at how we can create this faux hand-carved scalloped edges using the sculpting tools. We'll then take the model and look at creating some toolpaths to cut that out on our CNC machine. So let's go over to File, we'll just close this down, and then we'll go and create a new file. So we're going to give that a width of 10 inches, a height of 8 inches, We'll set Z0 off the top of the block, give that a material thickness of 3 quarters of an inch, set our XY position to be in the lower left hand corner and we'll work with a high modelling resolution. Then we can press OK. So the first thing we need to do is look at importing our model. So we're going to go to the modelling tab, we're going to come up and use this option here to import a component or a 3D model. From the project folder, I'm going to bring in the horsehead underscore model dot crv 3d file and then press open. You can see that's brought that in. I'd like to align that to the center of my material. So we're going to go to transform objects and use the option to align selected objects. I'm going to align that to the material uh, in the center vertically and horizontally. We can see it's done that there. We can close that form down. The next thing I'd like to do is just size that, so if that's selected we're going to go into transform objects and use the option to set selected object size. I'm going to alter the width here to be 7 inches, I'm going to keep link XY checked so that it scales in proportion, then I'm going to press apply and then I'll close that form down. And so you can see that we have quite a bit of space around our model. And the reason for that is we're going to be creating vectors shortly that will look at offsetting those. And we're going to create a component which we will look at sculpting, so it's good for us to have this space around the model here. So let's go over and tile our windows vertically, that way we can see the 2D view and the 3D view. Then we're just going to go and check the properties of our horse component. So we're going to go up to the properties form. So then we're going to go and adjust the shape height of our component. I'm going to make that 3 eighths of an inch and it's important for us to remember this as when I come to create my recess shape we'd like to make it a little bit deeper than the horse's head. So we'll look at making that recess shape around 0.4. Okay so then let's just close the properties form down. So when we create a part that's going to be recessed or dished below the modeling plane it's very important that we create a component that represents that plane. And so if we go to this option up here to model, we can use this option here to add in a zero plane. You'll notice that we can see that plane there in the 3D view, so it's filling up our entire job space with this plane here. We can see the component here in the component tree. However, we can't see a grayscale. So let's go to our Layers tab. We can see that the software has automatically added in a zero plane layer and it's automatically switched off. So let's switch that on and we can see the grayscale there. So it does that by default so that it doesn't obscure any of the vectors or components that we were working with on our original layer one. So let's go back to our modeling tab. So now we're ready to go and create our recess shape. To do that I need a vector boundary. So I'm going to select my horse head model here and I'm going to come over into the modeling tools. I'm going to use this option to create a vector boundary from selected components. So we're going to use that option and then we can see uh, if I just deselect our horse head by clicking in the white space we can see there that it's fitted a vector around our grayscale in the 2D view. So if I just fit that back to the screen there by using the zoom to fit option and what we're going to do is we're going to take this vector and we're going to offset that outwards and this will give us some space around our model and so the value that you should offset this will vary depending on the size of your part and the units that you're working with. Generally we'll go 25% more than the depth of the recess that you're planning to model. And so with that vector selected, let's go and create that offset. So we'll go into the drawing tab, and we're going to use the option to offset selected vectors. So I'd like to offset this outwards by half an inch. I'd like to have the option to delete original checked, and then I'm going to say offset. So you can see it's deleted the original one, and it's just gave us this new offset that's offset outwards by half an inch. 
So then we can close that form down. I'm going to select that vector and we're now ready to go and create our recess shape with this vector here. So we'll go into the modeling tab and we're going to use the option to create shape from vectors. So we're going to work with a curved profile and I'm going to put in an angle of 75 degrees. Now the exact angle that you use may vary but it needs to be quite steep. I'm going to set my final height to be limited and I'm going to limit that to 0.4. So remember it needs to be a little bit bigger than the model itself. And we set the model's height to be 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to set that to subtract. I'm going to rename that and call this component recess. And then we'll press apply and then we can close that down. And then we can take a look at that. Okay, so from this angle here it looks as though it's sat well within that recess shape but just to check that there isn't any area sticking above the zero plane we're going to come over to the scale Z height here. Okay, and we can see that the maximum Z is at zero. Now if there is a positive number here it means that there is some areas of your model that are sticking above the zero plane. So you may need to alter the angle of the recess shape or reduce the height of the model sat within that recess. Okay, so I'm okay with that. We'll just say okay. The next thing what we need to check is to make sure that the edge of our recess shape is roughly going to the edge of our model in the recess. And the easiest way to check this is just by maximizing the 3D view. We'll just pop that in Z and then we can just switch off the horse and switch that back on. And so we can see that there is very little overlap between the edge of the horse and where the edge of our recess comes in there. Now if you found that your recess was coming in a bit too much then you'd have to look at remodeling that either with a higher angle or by looking at offsetting your vector out a little further. So now that I'm happy that my model isn't sticking above our zero plane and that the component corresponds with the curved edge here then we can go and look at smoothing and sculpting this recess shape. So I'm going to take the recess, hold down shift and select the zero plane. We're going to go and apply a smooth filter. So we're going to go into the smoothing filter. Our spire will warn me that we must bake that before we edit it. I'm happy to go ahead with this and we can edit that as a single object. So we'll press OK here. And so it will do that at a default of 50%. I'd like to maximise that to 100% there. And then I'm going to bake that as I'd like to apply another 100% smooth on there. So I'm going to bake that again. Okay, so you can see it's become a lot softer around these edges here. So we'll OK that. And so I'm going to rename that component. So I'm going to select it, right mouse click, go to rename, and I'm just going to call this recess. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this a stage further and give this recess a faux hand carved scalloped edge around the part. So to do that we must use the sculpting tools. So I'm going to select the recess and then we're going to come over and use the sculpting tools here. We're going to use the smudge option. That's going to allow us to push material around as we want to push areas out of the inside edge to the outside. Okay, so we're going to go with a diameter of around 140, strength around 60, smoothing is set to 70. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click from the inside and then push outside. So I'm going to click. You'll notice that my cursor will change to red when I click, like so. And I'm just going to push that material out. Okay, I'm going to do that again. We're just going to work our way around this recess shape, just pushing out material from one side to the other we're creating these really nice scalloped edges. Okay, So we're getting that faux hand carved look there. So if you find that there's areas that you don't like what you've just sculpted you can go over here to number five and use the undo brush and then just select the area that you'd like to undo. Okay, and so you just carry on working around there. If you find that your diameter is a bit too small or a bit too big, then you can just reduce or increase the diameter using the settings there. And the same applies for the strength. Okay, and we'll just push those up till we get to where we started from. Okay, and so I'm happy with that. So I'd say keep 
and then I'd press OK. So now we're almost ready to go and create our toolpaths to cut that out on our CNC machine. But first I need to go and create a vector that follows our scalloped edge that we've just created here. So I'm going to go and tile my windows vertically and I'm going to select that area, the recess component where we just looked at sculpting those scalloped edges. And we're going to go into the drawing tab and we're going to use this option here, trace bitmap. And so we don't normally use this tool to trace vectors from an image. But for a component grayscale, we can select this white colour here, as this is the lightest colour and it will represent our zero plane. And so we can see now that it's highlighted in red in the 2D view. So we're just going to go to some of the default settings here and we'll press preview. We can see it's applied a vector around that recess and it's also applied a vector around our entire part there. So let's just press apply and we'll close that down. I'm going to select this vector here and I'm going to delete it as we don't need that. So I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to use the option to delete there. And so now we have that vector that represents that scalloped edge and so we can use that as a machining boundary. So let's go and switch to our toolpaths tab. So I'll use that option there and the first thing we need to do is go and set up our material. Now there's quite a few important things to think about when working with a recess model. Firstly is our Z0. Now you're probably going to want to Z0 off the top of the block as this will allow you to very accurately set where the face of your material is that your recess is going to be machined down into to give you the best chance of getting a nice crisp edge on the part here. Secondly is the model position in the material. For this recess shape I'm going to have a gap above the model of 0 inches and this will make sure that the edge of my recess is going to be forced all the way up to the surface of my material. And so we'd go and check the other parameters within this form and if you plan to actually machine this example shown in this tutorial then it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the material that you are using. So we'll go ahead and press OK there. So now we can go and create our first toolpath. Now I already have my vector selected and the first toolpath I'd like to create is the 3D roofing toolpath. So with that selected let's go over and create the 3D roofing toolpath. Okay, so the tool that I'd like to use is already selected, it's a quarter inch end mill. If that wasn't the tool that I wanted to use then I'd press select and then I'd choose a tool from the tool database. I'm just going to cancel that. And then I'm going to go into the edit option and just check some of the parameters in here. I'm going to go with the default settings and then press OK. So the machine limit boundary, I'm going to make sure that I have selected vector selected. as We must make sure that this is the vector boundary that we're working to. And then for the boundary offset, I'm going to make sure that I put zero in there as I don't want to offset this as we're cutting a recess shape. We want the center of the tool to just go up to the vector and we don't want that to go any further past that vector. Roughing strategy, we're going to go with a Z level. We're going to raster that, give that machine allowance of 0 0.03. And then we're just going to call that 3D roughing and then we'll press calculate. Then we can go and preview that toolpath. We can see that that's creating that preview there. Okay, so we can take a look at that. Then we can go and close that, put that back in Z. And then we can now go ahead and create the finishing toolpath. So if that vector is still selected, let's go over to the 3D finishing toolpath. And in here we're going to use an eighth inch ball nose. Okay, it's already selected. I'm just going to go to the edit option and just check the settings in here. I'm happy to go with these settings, so I'm going to press OK. Again, we're going to use the selected vector, boundary offset of zero. Then I'm going to cut this using the raster strategy. We're just going to call this toolpath 3D finish and press calculate. You can see that's calculated their toolpaths there, so let's maximise the 3D view and then we'll preview that toolpath. Okay, and so we can see uh, the results that we're getting here based on the values and parameters that we've put in there. 
And so we can see that the part looks okay. However, if we just zoom in, we can see that there is a lip around the edge of our recess there. And I know that we set up the material so that the 3D model was pushed all the way to the top of the material block. So it's not caused by having any gap there. What this was probably due to is when we fitted the vector, we had a limited number of colours that we could fit it to. And so that vector may not go all the way up to the top of the edge of our part here. Now this is easy for us to adjust. So I'm just going to close that down. And then I'm just going to press page up just to tile our windows again. I'm just going to go back into the 3D finish option. I'm just going to go into the boundary offset. I'm going to enter a small offset of 0 0.05. And so this should allow the tool to roll past the vector uh, by this small amount. So let's just calculate that. I'm just going to maximize the 3D view. Then we're just going to preview that toolpath. And we can see straight away that that's removing that lip along the edge there. And so that completes this tutorial where we've looked at how to successfully create a recess shape that we can place a model completely inside of. We then looked at how we can use the sculpting tools to create this faux hand carved edge. And then we finished that by creating the toolpaths to cut the part on our CNC machine. So let's go and close that down. And then at this stage, it would be a good idea to go and save that file. So we'll go to File, Save As, and we'll call that Recess Model. We'll save that, and you can access that from your project folder.